conspiratorial world where a lot of these things where there's a very fine line between conspiracy and reality, whoever is doing this, maybe they're doing it now. It wasn't always this way, but maybe now they're doing it because they realize they're at the 12th hour and they don't have enough silver in our strategic stockpile. So they're finding a way to keep the price at a level that makes everyone quite disinterested. And it's not something to take lightly. And at the same time, we're bankrupting ourselves. It's a very scary situation on every single level. And um, I don't know. I hate I hate even seeing what I see as it pertains to war. I just would like to go back to simpler times, Chris. But uh, as the Chinese curse says, may you live in interesting times. In today's episode, the renowned expert Andy Schechtman provided valuable insights into the recent performance of the silver market and the factors influencing it. His perspective sheds light on the ongoing dynamics in the precious metals world. At the same time, gold has reached a three-month peak, marking a second consecutive weekly rise, driven by the heightened Middle East conflict that is boosting safe haven demand. As of Friday, spot gold saw a 0.4% increase, reaching $1,880 per ounce, hitting its highest point since July 20th. Simultaneously, U.S. gold futures added 0.6% to reach $1,992.50. Andy Schechtman, in the interview, emphasized the significant role of geopolitical events and central bank purchases in the silver market. He discussed the potential impact of these factors and highlighted the ongoing challenges, including the behavior of commercial banks, which have a substantial influence on the silver market. Schechtman's insights are particularly relevant in the current context, where uncertainty around the Israel-Gaza situation and the Middle East in general is affecting the markets. As he pointed out, the enormous uncertainty surrounding these geopolitical events can lead to heightened safe haven demand. His comments resonate with the fears and risk aversion observed in the markets, with investors seeking the security of precious metals. The weakening concerns of a Federal Reserve rate hike in 2023 have further bolstered gold prices, with Fitch Solutions projecting an average of $1,950 per ounce for the year. While interest rates are on the rise, the precious metals sector appears poised for potential unprecedented growth. We can talk about fundamentals all day long. Yes, and at some point, the supply and demand physical fundamentals will come into play. But I think they'll come into play in a different way than most people think I'm hedging at. And that is that when the commercial banks, I believe, decide it's time to blow up the money managers and really do it in this environment where, according to Ted Butler, we have massive short position or massive shortage rather in available silver on the Comex platform. Um, and you see, as you mentioned, uh, that we see a big price rise as the commercial banks go long and the managed money have been hoodwinked into going short and to selling their longs to the commercials at subsidized prices one of these days and i think this is ted butler's contention as well that the big commercial banks will not short the rising market and that's really what they've done all of these years which is counterintuitive right you're supposed to short a falling market if you want to pile on and make bigger profits if you short the rising market you better have deep pockets or know the playbook or both and that's what's so unusual about the way the commercial banks short this market. They suck in the speculation after they go short uh, and lose everything. Then they go long. When the prices are low, the commercials take the other side. They let the price rise. And, and, and as the price is rising, the commercials start to short the rising price. One of these days, they won't do that. They won't short the rising price. And it will just start to run away, creating a massive short squeeze. And the question is, where do these institutions get the silver. And I think that is probably a problem that Bear Stearns faced back in 2008. But I digress. The point of it is, is that, yeah, um, I think, you know, Ted is right on a lot of levels. And until, until they stop shorting the market on a rising price, um, I think it's just going to be more of the same. And maybe this is the beginning. Maybe this is the beginning fundamentals would sure as hell say it ought to be because I certainly wouldn't want to be naked short in this market. I don't know about you. ETF offtakes. We've seen metal backdoored out of SLV and GLD. 
Uh, we've seen it taken off of the COMEX. We've seen it taken off the LBMA. They, they reaches the point where they have to keep trying to find other solutions. Look, they're doing it off the Shanghai Metal Exchange as well. Record low in silver, if I'm not mistaken. Some of the largest offtakes in silver ever recently uh, off the Shanghai Exchange. So they're exhausting every avenue they can to pry metal from the market before it is exposed for its real value, a strategic value, not an industrial value or a monetary value, but a strategic value. And uh, I think that's exactly what's happening. They are misdirecting as the art of war. We've talked about this for years, you and I. This is classic misdirection. And, you know, the bigger question is, why have they held it down for so long? What's the reason that they have such a concentrated short position? And then take a step back from there and understand why they are act, letting it act this way. So the public, with all of this money, has no idea where to put it. And gold and silver being such an amazing place to put it at these levels and with the geopolitical environment. And they're just blind to it because the banks are pretty damn good at, at creating a perception of reality. So I think you have to trust your gut. And that's the most honest answer I can give. This is part of this, too. Maybe the U.S. government is hoarding silver and using the, the commercial banks and their ability to control the price, keep it in a level uh, to create volatility uh, through levered futures contracts and to keep it not violating these moving averages. Like when gold just shot up, it just came up to the 200 day and came down. Now that's technical analysis 101. It was not confirmed. They're going to sell that. So the traders aren't going to buy that right now. Uh, you you play that market if you're a swing trader, but you don't if you're a, a hedge fund or whatnot. If it if it had if it's violating, if it's not confirming, you're not going to buy that. So they keep it within range bound within these levels. They violate moving averages. They do things counterintuitively with price in a conspiratorial world where. A lot of these things where there's a very fine line between conspiracy and reality, whoever is doing this, maybe they're doing it now. It wasn't always this way, but maybe now they're doing it because they realize they're at the 12th hour and they don't have enough silver in our strategic stockpile. So they're finding a way to keep the price at a level that makes everyone quite disinterested and allows them at prices very, very unfair to the producers of the silver, to the holders of silver, and to the real world value of silver are buying it and stockpiling it as maybe a last ditch chance to do so before it truly expresses itself in dollar prices. Because remember, you know, you look at gold, it's at all time highs in most of the currencies around the world, not silver yet, but gold is. And what happens when the dollar really tanks? That's, you know, if they're not already pre-positioned to that moment, well, good luck. So look, yeah, I know there's a, that's conspiracy, that's conjecture, I get it. But you have to try and start to figure things out. Like, why the hell are they allowed to be so concentrated short? Why? Why, why, why are all these things happening that are just counterintuitive? I think that there's a little bit of conspiracy in every bit of reality and or vice versa. Or you know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know. I rest. I rest my case. The 2024 Global Economic and Market Outlook appears to echo this year's trends with expectations of weaker growth and a possible U.S. recession. This forecast anticipates a strong bond rally as interest rates are cut and fragile stock markets due to reduced demand affecting earnings. However, this outlook, which did not materialize this year, may also be off the mark for next year. Both the United States and China, the world's two leading economic engines, seem to be accelerating rather than heading for a soft or hard landing. The crucial challenge lies in the persistent surge in U.S. bond yields, which, if it continues, could lead to the realization of this pessimistic scenario. Recent U.S. data, such as the impressive performance of retail sales in September and a robust labor market, suggests a different narrative. The Atlanta Fed's GDP Nowcast model forecasts substantial growth, Despite concerns about high borrowing costs due to mounting debt, China's economy also outperformed expectations with a 4.9% annual growth rate in the third quarter. 
This prompts economists to reconsider their growth projections for 2023, casting doubt on the World Bank and IMF's downward revisions for 2024. Despite prevailing global economic pessimism, investors find it challenging to adopt a risk-off stance while expectations remain modest. As long as the bar for exceeding expectations remains low, a cautious approach may not be justified in tactical asset allocation. In the continuation of the episode, we'll show you more clips of Andy Schechtman giving his insights on the matter. Watch the video to the end and check our pinned comment for some massive sign-up bonuses. As Bybit gives you free $20 just for creating an account so you can test a regulated exchange on a trade real crypto for free. Let's get into the video. Talk of the merging of the Shanghai Gold Exchange and the Moscow Metals Exchange. And, and um, you're going to see, I believe, at one point, all of this metal that is right now, you look at the price of gold in, in, in Shanghai, it's $120 an ounce more than in London. How much is going to get arbitraged over there? Is that opening their eyes to the fact that if they set a price even higher than that, that all of this metal will just arbitrage over there. And I, I thought that would happen for a long time. But these exchanges that are viewing the shenanigans on the COMEX and the LBMA, that was the whole reason they started the Moscow Metals Exchange. Was and 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 when they said it, they said this is to combat the you know the deceit in the Western markets. And one of these days, these are the entities that are accumulating all of the gold. You know, you look at, at at the central banks who bought it all, the West is like selling it, and it's mostly China and 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 Russia and, and India and, and Saudi Arabia and Poland and all of these countries. Now, Poland, I don't kind of just threw in there because I just read that they bought an awful lot recently, but all of these countries are massively accumulating it, and the majority of it is going to the BRICS countries, the majority of it. In fact, 2,932 tons over the last 12 years has gone to the BRICS countries in terms of what they say they have bought from, you know, four of the five BRICS countries. And I don't know. I just think that at some point it's because of the way they're able to control the price like this and play this game um, that you're going to see – the price of gold and silver and commodities in general, I think at some point will move eastward because these exchanges are, 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 are not a true reflection of demand. When you say, you know, when we see uh, prices decline, we haven't, no one sells. This is all done on paper. And the reality of what's going on in the retail market is completely detached from what goes on on COMEX, and it's just detached. The, the, the futures market is controlling the price, not the commodity controlling the, the futures market or controlling the price. It's the tail wagging the dog. And I think, much like many of the things that are growing long in the tooth with the Western system, this will go by the way of the dodo bird. And I think you'll see other exchanges start to pick up the torch and carry the real price of gold and silver in the future. So. One of these days, they're going to let it run, and you're going to see price swings like this much, much higher, maybe a couple hundred bucks in gold, maybe 20 bucks in silver. Who knows? But I think this is what it will look like in terms of how fast it will go, but I think it'll be much more in terms of its dollar appreciation. And it's not something to take lightly, and at the same time, we're bankrupting ourselves. It's a very scary situation on every single level, and... Um, I don't know. I hate, I hate even seeing what I see as it pertains to war. I just would like to go back to simpler times, Chris. But uh, as the Chinese curse says, may you live in interesting times. Uh, but I, I think it will, it will stem from a banking problem. And the fuse to the banking crisis has been lit. And the next one, I, look, I was at lunch the other day with, with two business owners, very successful business owners, and I asked them, do either of you know what a bail-in is? And neither of them did. They had no clue. And were blown away when I explained it was written into law in the Dodd-Frank Act. And I, I think this is what they want. They want to call the banks. The banks are fragile already. Rates continue to rise. And wait until we see a bank bail-in. Now, this is what will ignite the fuse, not only in 
people's awakening to precious metals, but it, it will, I think, be that moment that I've always talked about where you won't find anything because the public at large has never even thought about buying metals. But where do you go in that moment where the banks are bailed in and it creates a, a, a chain reaction with all of these banks that are very underfunded and over, you know, over uh, uh, leveraged and and have this this massive amount of of unrealized losses very quickly. This could turn very, very ugly. That's when premiums really take off, in my opinion. Look, there's a million places where reasons why the premiums could and should and probably will take off. But I can only say it so much. No, these are are as opportune in terms of premium uh, as we continue to see over the last four years, at least. And that blows my mind because you, I read Ted Butler every week and he talks about this huge shortage in Comex silver. Uh, I don't have a problem with it right now, but I will tell you, I, I could see that as I have many times before change in the blink of an eye. And that's, again, as truthful as I can be. Please share your thoughts on Andy's interview and his outlook on gold and silver if you are yet to do so. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I see you next time.